Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to show you how to set up a tool center point today. So let's go and get started. Now, if you do not have the robot sitting on a table or you don't have your um, tool here for your reference point, then you need to go back and watch a separate video. But basically what you need to do if your tool center point is somewhere other than out in front of the robot is just click at the base here and then move him out a little bit here and there. I'm not actually going to move mine because I've kind of already got it set up just for the ease of making the video go a little bit faster. So I'm just going to leave mine where it's at. But just remember if you hover over the lines there you can left click and drag it around. So the biggest thing here is making sure that you're measuring a certain distance from the base. We don't want to be too far but yet we don't want to be too close. So I found what works is if you come up to the measuring tool here X, Y, and Z could be clicked here. So you could see something kind of like this. So you'll just want to unclick X, Y, and Z there. All right. If you come up to the measuring tool here and click on it, then go down to our base and left click. Then we can pull across here like such and it'll tell us that we're about 342 millimeters. So as long as the base of this thing is about 342 millimeters, you should be okay. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be right at 342, but somewhere in the 340 range is about good. All right, so again, the way we did that is we clicked on the measuring tool. We just, it, since I was already clicked on it this time, it actually went on and had my um, mouse down there and I just pulled across the 340. That so we have that set up. I'm going to walk us through how to set up a tool frame. So when you come to class, your tool frame is going to be a very important thing to have set up but it's also important to know how to get there and what to do in this point so if you bring out your teach pendant here and give it a few seconds um, I am going to want to hover and create a tool frame but I'm going to want to hover over top of my tool reference point and create a drop down above it and then two 90 degrees apart from each other okay so first thing we're going to do is hit menu. I'm going to scroll down to set up here and then we're going to scroll over to frames and then when we click on frames we're going to hit enter and it's going to bring up probably the last thing you were in. In this case I was in user frames. So I'm going to hit um, previous here and then I'm going to choose other and I'm going to choose tool frame. Now with this tool frame I have this first one set up right here which is called group one. What you will need to do is create a name here. So I'll scroll on over, or actually when I hit enter here for the details, where the comment is, this is where you're gonna put your group um, name. So if your last name is Davis and the person beside you's last name is um, Davis, then your group name would be, hit enter here, options keyboard, keyboard, then you would just call your group um, DD. All right, so first letter of each last name, exit. So now that we have our last name in here, I want to go and record a point. Now, I'm not actually gonna show or spend the time jogging down to the robot just for the ease of making this video last a little bit less time. So I've already created the point, so I'm just gonna do a shift move to, and this is what my first point should look like. All right, I'm going to get rid of the teach pendant for a second. And notice that if you were to look at it, it looks like the two points are somewhat lined up. Now you can scroll in. Once you do that, then you're pretty much set up for your first recording position. So once you jog the robot down to where it looks like this, I'm going to pull up my teach pendant and where I was in... Um, Approach point one, this would be my first approach point. So right here I would hit shift and I would do a record. And then now it's gonna calculate this position here. Now for my second position, what I want to do is I want to come kind of from the side, not directly from the side, but kind of off of the angle in this direction here. Okay, so if I were to scale back and look at the robot, I don't wanna be the tip pointing directly out this way but I do want the tip to be pointing from a direction kind of in here and the reason I'm going to do that is because if you were to kind of come in from the side for your second approach point 
then your third approach point would need to be 90 degrees from that. So that means you'd either have to be way out here facing back towards the base of the robot or you'd have to configure your robot to be pointing towards you, the user. And this causes a little bit of an issue. So what I found, if you were to actually come across here and go at an angle, kind of like if you pictured 90 degrees being from to the base of the robot out to the right here, then kind of go in that middle portion right there where that 45 mark would be at. So I'll show you that in just a second. All right. <laughs> Anytime you're recording a position, you need to always Z positive up. So when I'm done recording this, I'm automatically just going to move down to approach point two here so I don't re record over approach point one. I'm going to hit shift. I'm going to slow my speed down a little bit and I'm going to just Z positive up. Now the reason I'm Z positive up is because I want to get out of the way of any kind of something that may or may not be in the way there. Okay. So in RoboGuide it really doesn't matter but out on the tables where we're using them in the classroom it does matter. So you need to make sure that you're always Z positive up to get up out of the way because when I hit in a second shift move to this next approach point you're going to find that the robot's just going to move right on down. Shift move to here. You will not be able to do this until you've created the point. But just take note of what's happening. I'm rotating joint, I mean joint four around here. I'm pulling uh, joint five kind of up to get this gripper kind of level here. And then I'm just going to approach it from a angle that's kind of 45 to 90 being back this way. All right. So this is kind of what we're going to be left with here. All right. So you'll see if I were to come up and scroll in or scroll around that um, the two points are again somewhat touching here. Now if I move around back to the back you'll see that the robot is maybe down a little bit but it's pretty level across here. All right, So that's what it would look like from kind of a side angle here. So if I was standing at the side looking at it on the front it would kind of look at look like that right there. Okay, And then from this side it would look like it's on an angle there but that's where I want you to make your second approach point. So here you'd hit shift record and then now you have another one. That if I go down to the third line and hit shift move to, if this was a real robot on the table I would probably knock my tool reference point right down and if I do that what's going to happen is then I'm going to have to retouch all my points up again. So that's why I tell you to Z positive up. So in RoboGuide, again, you can do shift move to, but just remember that, see, watch my robot right here. Uh, is it going to hit? Absolutely hits. All right, so we're cutting through the invisible robot there. Always Z positive out of the way, so you can actually do what you need to do there. Oh, and I've closed off my teach pendant while I was moving. So shift move to and then there we go all right so if I were to go look back at front you can kind of see that now I'm kind of 90 degrees away from each other all right so I had a point pointing in here now I have a point there so if I go back you can kind of see this is where I am from this side front and then the opposite side so it may not be 100% perfect but for the three-point method and to kind of get everybody familiar with what you need to do this is what we got here all right, so this is setting up a um, tool frame using the three-point method here. Once you have this set up, again, Z positive back up. And then once you Z positive back out up, you can actually go through each approach point and move to it just to make sure that it still looks good. So if I go back to shift, this first one here, shift, move to, move to, it's going to bring me right back down on top. All right, so once we're here, we can kind of test our tool frame to see how accurate it is. So now that if you want to test it, what you need to do is you need to hit shift coordinate and change your tool frame to the one you just created. In this case, I just created tool frame one. When I do that, you're going to now see that the tool tip has moved from the end of arm tooling there, joint six, down to the tip of the tool. That's why you're seeing that little green looking tennis ball down towards the end there. All right. Once you zoom in and zoom out, you can actually see the ball get a little bit smaller. But honestly, what it's doing is just telling you that if you can, if you 
you move in an X, Y, or Z direction, this is where you would be going. Now you'll see that I was doing a J negative or J5 negative or J5 positive movement there, just rotating it around. Now I want you guys to try doing that. So try your J3, I mean your J4, your J5, and your J6 movements around your tool reference point and just kind of see, zoom in and kind of see how good that tool tip stays on your tool reference point. And if it's real bad, then maybe you need to go in and retouch up some of your points. But if it's pretty good, like this one is, it's good enough for what we need to do in the class, then go on and submit your file into Moodle. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Have a good day. Thanks.